Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And it wouldn't be right if I wasn't here with my big dog, the only dog, Big Nate dog. Yes, sir. Glad, up, glad to have you back, Isaiah. Yeah, Where have you to, been, man? man? You know, I had to go down to the Super Bowl for a hot second. You know, yeah, went out yeah. Checks well, out well, some you of just things. networking? Always networking, man. You know how it is, Nate dog. If you ain't networking, you ain't going nowhere. You know. Let, let, let me tell you something. Yeah. It was a struggle without you. It was, <laughs> it was a struggle trying to get in and out and trying to change the subject. You can go to one to another. It's all good. Don't do that. Don't leave me again. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I met a lot of good people, though, man. Yeah, yeah. I met a lot of good people down there. Ah. Uh, you know, right off the top, some of the people that stick out to me are people who are near and dear to my heart, right. um, and probably true, probably you, you as well, especially the area that you grew up in. Uh, Doug Williams. Oh yeah, that's my man. That's my man right yeah, there. That's my man. Um, you know, he's the father of uh, one of the young ladies we yeah, worked with the Cowboys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. saw saw Doug, yeah. Mr. Williams. All right, uh, had opportunity to meet him. I had met him. Back in the draft, right? right? So every so often, I send messages through through our, our co-worker to say hello to him, but it was good to see him face-to-face. Doug Real, man. Come on, man. Doug Real now. Real one. And for those of you who don't know who Doug Williams is, okay, as a as a former African-American quarterback growing up through all the times, it was hard to be an African-American quarterback, and now it's a lot more accepted, right? right? He was the, one of the founding fathers. He yes, was he a, was. He was one of the founding fathers um, of that position, of that ethnic descent, and he is a doggone. They might they need to put a statue of that man up somewhere because um, he was held in high regard and still is held in high regard for those who look like him. It yeah. represent, representation matters, and uh-huh. and he was that for myself. He was that for a lot of other guys. And, I want to be quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and he played for the, for the, back in the day the Washington, Washington. Redskins. Yes, and, um, and he was the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Yes, All right, Beat Denver. Yep. Be so Denver. you know Came who else? Back. You know Came who else? Back. Is very Denver. instrumental to me. Who that? War Moon. War Moon went to Canada. Mm-hmm. Played for the Edmund Oilers. Is that got that right? Something right. like that. Something like that. Edmund. But anyway, broke all type of records over there. But why did he have to go there? Yeah, because he was he was black. He was black. Yeah. So yeah. War Moon. Okay. Again, one of the founding fathers but, of African American yeah. successful quarterbacks. He was the guy that. In college, he went to University of Washington. So yes, he was the first yeah. African American quarterback at the University of Washington. And this is Black History Month, y'all. So we're going to give y'all a little bit of education. Yeah. The first black quarterback at the University of Washington. Right. I was the second. Mm. I was the second. So right. I had a lot of conversations with him when I was going through my hardships at the University of Washington, trying to remain at the at the position. He didn't allow for me to leave. Right. Right. He didn't allow for me to leave. He spoke a lot of wisdom. He shared his wisdom. He shared his experiences. And it made my experience that I was going through look minute in comparison right. to what he had to go through. Wow. In order, in order to become a, a, a black quarterback at a big D1 university like University of Washington, he was having to go break in to the film room and send off his own VHS film. He was having to go break in, send off his film just so he can get recruited. Wow. Because the coaches weren't, they weren't going to speak on his behalf. So he had to do that. So he did that. He had an opportunity to go to University of Washington. From University of Washington, going into the NFL, trying to go into the NFL, they didn't want to let him play quarterback. They didn't want to let him play quarterback. So you know what he did? You just spoke on it. Well, yeah. Went he to went Canada. to Canada. Yeah. Canada gave him an opportunity. He went up there and did what? Lit it up. <laughs> Broke records. Won like six or seven Grey Cups. For the whole thing. Yeah. That a Grey yeah. Cup is, there, is the equivalent to the Super Bowl well, here in the yes. States. So he With went a up longer there. field and a wider field. Yeah, it feels huge. Yes. Rules a little bit different, but he went up there and lit it up. Proved himself. Right. Then came to the NFL after I don't even know how many years, probably six, seven years. Yeah. After breaking all the records in Canada, came to the NFL and broke all the other moral records. It was one of the, uh, I can't think of the uh, coach was with him, but he was one of the 
founding fathers of the running shoot, the running gun, who who because the league was fighting against that style of offense. Got you. And he was one of the uh, yeah. him and that coach. I can't think of his name, but they would they lit up the they lit up the league. And now after that, the league started taking off. Yeah. With that type of uh, offenses that are re- prevalent today. Yeah. 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 So I Warren Moon. I always kept my eye on him. He's always been soft spoken. Him and Doug. You would that angry black man theory does not apply to these nope. these two guys. Soft spoken, well mannered, intelligent what, what, what guys. Do you, what do you think? Now we're on it's kind of on the topic. What do you think it it would it took and it was really required of them to be that resilient during that period of time that they were coming up in? What 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 is I mean? Shoot, you can speak to it. I I, I didn't grow up in that era. I mean, I, I grew up in a little bit, I, but I, you was, I missed that era by a little bit. Uh, in the NFL, and I'm always reluctant to get into these type conversations because, uh, I, and I try to be very respectful because I don't want to uh, alienate other races. I, I don't want, but I'm not going to degrade mine. Absolutely. You so when I when, when you when you in the league when I came into the league. Offensive linemen was reluctant to let offensive linemen. Mm. Any position where they thought that you had to think, mm. they were reluctant to turn that over to the power. a black. Yeah. And so for a long time, even when we were being accepted on the offensive line, it still they wanted the center mm. to be of a different race. And uh, a lot of that is, and, and, and people may not want to, a lot of that is been, was taught. Let, let, let me break this down to the mm-hmm. babies do not come in the world races mm-hmm. or prejudice, whichever word you want to use. Okay. They, get, they have, two, have two different meanings. Pre, uh, prejudice and racism, two okay. different meanings. And you go look it up if you want to know the difference. But babies are not, they don't grow up and say, hey, mama, I don't like that black man. Uh, mama, I don't like that white man. That's being taught. That's being taught. And and so when that's being taught, uh, it's hard to break because this thing has been taught yeah. for not for hundreds, Generation. for thousands yeah. of Absolutely. years. Facts. Biblically, yep. it was taught. Yep. Biblically, it was taught. Yep. Different races, different agendas, different genders. Yeah. It was taught. Yeah. So all the weaknesses and strengths of what your perception is of a race yeah. was taught. So now let's fast forward thousands of years later. For Doug to have to go through what he went through, for uh, let's say uh, Wilt Chamberlain had to go through what he went through, mm-hmm. for all athletics, that is just a small, smaller than his cup. Yeah. But just think what your mom and dad had to go through. Remember, what what year was this? What, what year are we talking about? Nate, that these guys were coming up. These these guys coming up in the sixties. Sixties. Yes, these that, basketball that's, that's, players, these football players. Not that long players. ago, Nate. Doug's and was in the seventies, late seventies, early eighties. You talking about fifty years? Yeah. This ain't a long. This is not a long time ago. But but uh, <laughs> this is this is what I, I try to tell people is, and this is how I, I judge my friends sure. is if I have an issue. I'm dealing with a white friend, a mm-hmm. uh, Hispanic friend, and I can't see you first as a human. Yeah. Then we have a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, but now, and by the same breath, I understand a different society, a different culture. Yep. And if I don't agree with that society or that culture, I don't. Ha- I'm glad I don't have to go into it. I okay. involve myself. Yeah. To a degree where it's going to anger me. Sure. Uh, but sometimes I do have to, sometimes my friends have to check me and sometimes I have to check them, Yep. you know, because you have two different cultures or three different cultures or whoever's in the room, you, 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 you gotta know that there's different yeah. people that feel Absolutely. different They'll ways. receive it differently. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All so right. you have to be careful. You have to be respectful, but don't never back up from who you are. And that's what Doug them did. Doug, you know. If you're talking quarterbacks, he'll talk. He'll talk quarterbacks. And it, but I, this is what I know, Doug. Hey, man, how was it being a black quarterback? 
<laughs> and then he'll tell he'll tell you like, look at here. I played quarterback maybe 15, 20, 30 years, but I was black the day I was born. So exactly. I've been black all my life. Exactly. Now you can ask me how I felt being a quarterback and some of the things I went through as a black Absolutely. quarterback. Absolutely. That's a different so that, question. Different yeah. question. So I tell people, yeah. when you when you're addressing somebody and they hold the same title that you see the other guy hold, Come on, man. ask them. Come on, man. Hey, how, how was it being a quarterback? And they, if you want to be specific, say, how was it being a quarterback as a black you, man? You know, you want to know in relation to that statement. Yeah. Okay, that's a powerful <laughs> statement you just made. The most appalling statement I would say that's ever been made to me mm-hmm. while I was playing quarterback, right, as a black quarterback at the University of Washington, I was competing against three other guys, okay, all of which were, were, were white. Right. All of which weren't as talented as me. Right. I still had to prove it. Right. But they weren't as talented as me. Going through the competition, I'm winning the competition in terms of trying to get the starting position. I had coaches come up to me, multiple coaches. Why are you being so selfish? Wow. I looked at this and stretch lines. What do you mean? Why, why don't you just go, you know, we need help at receiver. Why don't you just go play receiver? Interesting. Did, did you ask the other guys that? Oh, man, don't be asking me that crap, man. Stop being selfish, man. We need your help. And I'm like, but, but you're not asking the other guys that. Wow. Mm, I, I ain't. Wow, that, that, that would have hurt. Oh, it hurt. It that hurt. hurt man. It hurt bad. But I didn't let them know it hurt. Right. So it got to the point I was receiving comments like that from the coaches. Right. From right. the coaches, Nate. Right. So often, I stopped talking to them. I stopped talking to the coaches. The only coach I was talking to was my quarterback coach slash offensive coordinator. Only person I talked to. Mm, and, and, and you know what? If you was to go to one of those coaches now, they'll probably be like, don't even, I don't remember that. It's absolutely. Absolutely. And the only person, who, and there was, there was times where I would go back, I'll never forget this. I was facing so much of that. Mm. So much of those comments. Right, making me feel like uh, you know, right. like like I'm being belittled, and right, I don't right. I don't deserve to be in that room, right? Some right. of the things you were just talking about, right? Not not wanting to give black like, quarterbacks of African American descent that right. kind of power and that responsibility. Right. And um, I remember one time it was just overwhelming. I, I, I grew up in a tough in my household. Right. My mom was like, "Hey, we don't show emotions. We don't right. you know, ain't no soft. Ain't gonna be no soft player around here, you know." So I would bottle it all up. And I remember specifically one time I went back to my, um, I was about, I was supposed to start. I was supposed to start against USC. I know. So I was supposed to start uh, against Notre Dame. Right. And they bumped me all the way down to third string. Bumped me all the way down to third string. And I had to sit there and take it. And they put our guys in the game. Uh, my other guys I was competing with, and they, they were stinking it up. Didn't stand a chance. We didn't have, we didn't have, the guys up front to stop, you right, know, right, at right. that time. So they were, they didn't, and they didn't have the athletic ability I had. So they really had no chance. They were just sitting ducks right. and the whole game, you know, our guys are sitting there, um, you know, asking me, I said, come on, why don't you get in the game, man? Come on. We need you. We need, we can't do this. I'm like, this ain't, this ain't my, it's not my decision. Right. You know, but I'm sitting there having to watch my team lose. And you know, right, we're, right. that's what brothers, you know what I'm right, saying? So right. as competitors, that's another, right. that's one thing. And then those are your brothers out there getting right. their butts kicked and you know that you can help them, but you, you're not being put in a position to help them. So I'm sitting there just having to take all this from my, from my teammates, you know, thinking that I'm the one choosing not to play. I'm like, nah, you know, so they put me in this, this, this rough position of being accused by my teammates right. that I'm the bad guy. And it's really them. And then we get ready to face the number one team in the nation at the time. And they come in there and say, <laughs> Isaiah, you're starting. So I have received so much conflict within the, within that locker room and within right. the, the offices. I went to my car one day and I broke down, broke down, wow. which I never, I never did, right. never right. did. And I called my mom and she knew as soon as she heard me cry, she thought, what, what's going on? Cause she know that's not my thing. Right. Man, she went up there. <laughs> <laughs> went, went mama, went she, angry black mom woman. Mom went up there with the strap and everything, <laughs> man, came up to the school and cursed out coach. And, and that's when I, that's when I touched base and warm on. We had a, uh, we had a, uh, an old school cat mentor, right. just a man. I don't even know what his role. His name was Abner Thomas. Right, right. right. One of the few times I ever cried in my life, man, was Abner passed away about about six years ago, and um, Abner was like big unk. He would always he'd be he's the guy who was like, get them chains back, get them mother chains back. He was that yeah, guy on the right, sideline, right? right? He was just a the get back, guy. the get back guy, right? Yeah. But he was he was the old wisdom just in the building. Right, that, right. He's seen him come and go. 
He's seen everybody come and go. Um, so whenever you wanted some wisdom or you just sit down and talk to old school, you know, um, and he was there when Warren Moon was there, you know. So yeah. I talked to him and he got me in touch with Warren Moon. Yeah. Warren Moon took me out and, and took me to lunch and just and just talked to me because, dude, I was I was going through it, Nate. Uh, you, you know, in that year was what year you was? Attending? Shoot, that was 2004. See, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 and I'm looking y'all right in the face. And uh, yeah, it ain't about let me tell you something. Let me tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, I've been on the, the highest. I've been to the lowest. And, and, and where I'm at now, it's called peace. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, with my Christian walk, I'm not allowed to hate yep. and, to har- and to harvest bad feelings. Correct. So, like I tell people, I forgive myself first, yeah. and I forgive the and I ask for forgiveness from those I've yep. uh, offended. And and so, but I forgive others too without them even asking because sure. that is that is my nature. So, uh, I, I'm listening to this young man, and my heart goes out to you, my man, because I went to all black school. Yeah. And we have our own form of prejudice in that within that within that community, yeah. Within that community, but uh, that's sad, man. Yeah, it sucked. That's sad. That's sad. Yeah. You had to go through that, yeah. and I, I hope you can forgive those folks. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I forgive them. I've, yeah. I've seen some of them, you know. Yeah. And um, that was probably in terms of my personal development. Right. It's still it was still a pain point. I learned right. a lot. Right. I learned a whole heck of a lot. Right. And I honestly don't know if I would change it because right. I wouldn't be who I am. Yes, yes. Had I not been presented with right. those those hurdles to overcome. Um, but those were huge pain points at the time and I've had to see those people since then. Yeah. And I had to say, How are you gonna how are you gonna respond? Right. How are you gonna respond? Are you gonna yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like are you gonna yeah. encounter them with with you know with this hate in your heart? Are you gonna encounter them and say, Hey, you know what's up? Like it was what it was. Yeah. Because it's not my job to make them believe that they were wrong, right? It's, it's yeah. my job to say, okay, God, what did you, what did you want me to learn through that situation? There no, you go. I'm there better from go. it. Wow. So hard. So so okay. that that takes us right to yeah. where you wanted to start in the first well, place. Well, before we even get there, Nate, okay. there's okay. a picture. There's there's a comment, right? The Super Bowl right. had two black quarterbacks for the first time ever. Yes, sir. Okay, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. So Patrick Mahomes was asked about you know being this is the showdown, and he said the guys that came before us set the stage for Jalen and me. Right, right. I'm just glad that we can set the stage for kids that are coming up now. Very mm, profound right, statement. Right. Very very pro- profound statement. Now, I'm not sure who put this picture out. I think the NFL did. But I'm going to show this picture. All right, I'm not sure if we can zoom in or not, but there it is, okay? All right, there's a picture, and you see Patrick Mahomes right there. Okay, let me go ahead and go out. You see this picture right here? Nate? Yeah, yeah, I see it, man. Okay, it got it, The picture got, got put out in the, in the media, and there was mm. one individual... Who didn't appreciate this picture? Who is that? Let me first let me tell you who's in this picture. All right. Repeat the statement. The guys that came before us set the stage for Jalen and me. Right. I'm just glad that we can set the stage for kids that are coming up now. That's Patrick Mahomes. Right. In this photo, Michael Vick. Right. In this photo, Donovan McNabb. Right. In this photo, Doug Williams. Right. Warren Moon. Right. Rodney Pete. Yes. Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes. Right. So five former black quarterbacks right. in this picture. You know who felt some type of way about not being in this picture? Who is that? Cam Newton. Yeah. Wow. Cam Newton was not in this picture. And uh. a lot of people had a lot of opinions about that. Now, t- granted, take it for granted. These aren't the only black quarterbacks in history. Because they talk with James Harrison. He's not in there. McNair's not in, in there. there. Yeah. Randall Cunningham's not, not in, in there. there. Yeah, it's I a mean, lot. There's a lot of, you know, freaking right. um, uh, Dante Culpepper's not, not in there. There's a lot there. of guys that aren't in this picture. Right. What are your thoughts on him feeling some type of way that he wasn't in that picture? Cornell Stewart. I, 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 but you know what? Uh, he's been always a... Uh, an icon. Mm. Wherever Cam's been, Florida. He <laughs> left Florida, went to Auburn, won a national championship, went to Panthers, and Panthers was already, already kind of who they were, but he took them to a new level. Uh, I, I feel a little bit of his pain. Okay. Uh, but uh, as long as he... Uh, Do you think he should have been next man up in this photo? 
I, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't know <laughs> who was taking the pictures, and I don't know why. I don't, yeah, I don't they, know why they. I don't know why them. they thought com- compel, but the, the but Warren Moon. And and Doug, Doug no I wish them two in the picture. That you, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there. I wish now James Harrison. I yeah, I wish yeah. he could have been in the picture with, with, with the Rams a little bit. One of the true pioneers yeah. helped start the Black College Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, now he should have been in there too. But uh, and I feel Cam. Cam has been uh, polarizing. And yeah. you know, and Cam is a forgotten guy. He is. He did. He is. This, this is what I've learned. From Dion and Troy Aikman, M, uh, Michael Irvin. It, somehow, whether they are up or down, you have to endear yourself to all people. Cam, Cam didn't endear himself Thanks. to all people. Thanks. I, I'm, I'm telling you now, I've been through my bad times, Mike. I'm just talking about my teammates. Correct. You know, Charles Haley. Mm-hmm. But how do these guys still smart enough to endear themselves to the fans nationwide? I can go almost anywhere yeah. in this U.S. of A. Yep. And somebody will look at me like, yeah. you know, and then I say, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, leave that yeah. alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So, uh, and, and Cam is a way more polarizing figure than I would ever be. Yeah. But he didn't endear himself to the Agreed. NFL. Somebody made a statement. This is just objective. This is yeah. just somebody somebody made the statement. They said Cam Newton is the best dual threat quarterback of all time. He could be. He could be him, Michael Vick. Uh hmm. Who else would fit in there? I think Randall has to get in there. Randall Cunningham. But Randall. To. Didn't always run just to run. He, no. you know, Cam and Vic for a long time. That was who they were. Who do you, who do you fear more, Cam Newton or Michael Vick? It's easy. It's an easy answer for myself. But, me, the reason I, uh, re, I would like to see them at both of their heights of intelligence when they could really throw the ball because Vic didn't can really throw the ball until he got with the Eagles. I would like to see Andy Reid with him Woo. at Atlanta. Vic was a little more stubborn. Yeah. Cam tried to learn a little bit quicker. Okay. But you're talking about sheer, and now you asked me about sheer talent. It's Michael Vic. Bro. Absolutely. It, I, I saw what he did to Florida State <laughs> almost by himself. So <laughs> that dude's a special. See, it, to me, sheer talent, when I'm looking at, who can move? Who can who can who can do it all? And if Michael Vick could have uh, made him see, this is one thing I I understand about all men and all. Well, and I'm saying men in a biblical sense that yeah. mean women too. Is you can learn what you want to learn, and for Michael Vick to cheat himself his first four years in the league the way he did. Just think a cannon arm. This dude can get get on his knees yeah. and throw the ball almost 100 yards. Yep. And, and you not want to learn coverages. You had Dan Reeve as your coach. He would have taught you all you needed. Then he, had, then he had a setback. Yeah, the then he had a setback with the animals. Okay. And then he came back and humbled himself. Correct. Humbled himself, the ultimate humble. Yeah, yeah no choice. And, 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 uh, and then he came back and he started learning the game. Correct. But now them legs, one is like dynamic. Yeah. That arm was you, you get what I'm saying? Uh, if had he take that mindset early on, what would yeah. he have been? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you say dual threat. Cam had the most success. Yes. But just sheer. Vic was the most athletic guy in the field when, he stepped, when the game started. Not even a question. You know what? He is the only guy. And in, in, uh, I didn't see a lot of you, so I don't know, your, you know yeah. how good or bad you sure. were. But the top two athletes, a top three athletes, just now for sheer speed, nobody would be better than Bob Hayes. Yeah. Just straight line. Really? Yo. Straight line. Rolling. Dion, nobody. What? The, uh, this is one time I will put Dion second. <laughs> but if I'm looking at sheer talent. Yeah. And see, I, I, the, you can challenge anybody in the world, you can challenge me. <laughs> but sheer talent. Deion Sanders and yeah. Michael Vick. Yeah, those two are they different. Different. Come on, man. Yeah, I tell people all the time, created, not born. 
certain individuals. God, yeah. hey, God made the rest of us. Yeah, well, you not in this group, but God got the rest of us to put. Y'all, came, we came out of this dust pile. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Hold on a minute, what over here? Over here, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. So, continuing on the Black History Month. Okay. Um, y'all gone it, Nate. It, you know what? Y'all gone it, Nate. You know where I'm going. But see, I'm not, let me say this right here. Go ahead, say it. Let me say this right here. Red Hour back. Huh? Thank you. Red Hour back. Uh-huh. Boston Celtics. Yeah. A GM and owner for yeah. a long time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Because he didn't he did not mess around. I want to thank um uh Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant. I want to thank John McKay. Right. Now, whether they was racist, prejudiced, I do not know. Yep. But I know what they went and did. Yep. They went and got black athletes. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank Bad Bryan for opening up the SEC. Opportunities, yep. And I want to thank John McKay for bringing them boys from California to thump them dudes yeah. <laughs> down south so they can see. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Go ahead on. I, you've been I wanting got, to get I got, I got three names for you, Nate. Okay. Okay? Okay. I want you to tell me what, what stands out about these names. Okay. Jonathan Gannon. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Gannon, he a coordinator for somebody. Mm-hmm. A head, is he a head coach oh, now? Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. Okay, Shane Steichen. Okay. Oh. Mm. Uh, Eric Bieniemy, uh, offensive coordinator. Okay. What is different about those three <laughs> names, Nate? Well, one, I know one of them black. Okay. That's one and, difference. And I don't know. I know. I think Gannon is white. So. Okay. So. So. And Eric, I don't know the other guy. Okay. Um, let me help you out a little bit, okay? okay. Um, right. Eric Bieniemy mm. was, as of today, right. was the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, yes, he was. Underneath Andy Reid. Yes, he was. Okay. How many Super Bowls does he, does he, does he have? Two. 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 Okay. All right. How many AFC Championship games did he play in? About five. Got you. Okay. All right. Uh, Jonathan Gannon was a defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, whom lost to Eric B. and me, Andy Reid, and the Kansas City Chiefs. That's right. Okay. Shane Steichen was the offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, who also yes, was yes. the loser in the championship game. So Man, you okay. pronounce his name. I, I think I thought it was Stitchum. It might be. It might be. Yeah. I apologize if I'm butchering the name. Okay. Um, I feel some type of way, Nate. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> How you feel? I'm not. I don't, I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. Um, over the past few years, uh huh, I feel as if Eric Bieniemy has been slighted. Mm-hmm. Over the past few years, take this year out of it. Right. Over the past few years, what we've seen over the last ten years in the NFL is, if you're an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, your team goes really far, or and especially if your team wins Super Bowl, usually mm-hmm. you're getting plucked. Right, right. They're taking you. You're getting a yes. head coaching opportunity. Right. Not an interview. Actual head coaching opportunity. They're just waiting on you to finish with the Super Bowl. Waiting for you to finish with the Super Bowl. Okay, right. some teams aren't as patient, right? right? So that might not give you the opportunity. But for the yeah. other teams that know that yeah. they want you, they're going to grab you. Right. Most teams want to grab somebody who's coming from success. That's right. Who played a huge role in success. Nobody would question Eric B. That's right. Who, who was his quarterback? Oh, Mahomes, man. And then he had the kid that went to the Redskins who was pretty yeah, good, too. Pretty good to I can't even think of his name. So Patrick Mahomes is your quarterback mm-hmm. who developed underneath your guidance. Right. You are underneath Andy Reid, as your, who was your head coach, right. who's freaking Jedi. Nobody's right. going to question his abilities. You have been in five AFC championship games, which means that you are right on the edge of going to the Super Bowl. Every year. Every year. Dang every year. Right? Kansas yeah. City, you just know that they're going to be in the conversation. And you have two Super Bowl rings as of today. And you still don't have a head coaching job. There were rumors over past years that he wasn't a good interview. Hmm. Wasn't a good interview. Great offensive coordinator. Great developer of talent, great executor of game plans, great winner. <laughs> bad interview. Two Super Bowl rings. Right. Bad interview. Not good enough, apparently, to receive a head coaching opportunity. But we'll give you an interview. We'll give you a chance. 
supposedly. And now, yet again, after winning his second Super Bowl, he has to make, people are calling it a lateral move. Yes, he did. I don't call it a lateral move, Nate. Mm. I think it's a, uh, he jumped down like Mario Brothers, jumps off one of them doggone blocks, right. okay? Yeah, yeah. He jumped down. The barrel he, thing. You're doggone right. Donkey he, Kong. Yes, Donkey Kong. <laughs> this is a huge step down for him. Those other names that I mentioned, the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, both receive head coaching jobs. Arizona Cardinals with Mr. Gannon. And uh, for Mr. Shane Steichen, if that's his right pronunciation, he's yeah. now the head coach for the Indianapolis Colts. Colts. The winner, Eric Bieniemy, is now the offensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders, who have no quarterback. At all. Have no real offense. At all. Have a couple pieces. But if he that. has to leave a really good situation and go down, not up, after proving what you're capable of. People are still doubting his play calling. People are still doubting how much power he actually has on the offense because of the great Andy Reid. Andy Reid has come out numerous times over numerous years, consecutive years, and said, Eric Benemy is a huge reason why we're winning these games. Why we're winning Super Bowls, why we're winning going to AFC Championship games. He is a huge contributor to that. I hope that he gets a head coaching job. He's this is Andy Reid. I hope that the gentleman underneath me who's helping me get to these games, get into these opportunities, I hope he gets a head coaching job. And yet that still, along with championships, along with the winning history, along with the development, is not enough to get a head coaching job. Help me understand why, Nate. I can't. Uh uh, th- th- this one baffles me. Uh, uh, the th- Sean, what's the young man name that came on? Uh, the young brother Sean McCoy. Uh, Lashawn McCoy. Lashawn McCoy. Lashawn McCoy, former Philadelphia Eagle, Eagle running back and former running back late in his career for the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. Uh, he came out and said that Eric Ben and me does not possess the ability to be a head coach. The, the thing I would say to answer your question is how many people during the offseason, and this is where I think people have to start speaking up because Eric Benjamin has so many people that believe in him. It's just too bad none of them are owners. Uh, you, you know, you hear over this, and this is – you hear this a lot. Oh, they're comfortable with their own kind. Stop that. Stop that. Uh, what we what, what we what we need to do is, if you want success, you have given eighteen hundred coaches, white and black, up under Belichick, all type of opportunities. Some twice. Here is a guy that has given you nothing but success. He knows how to talk to players because he was a player. He knows how to get along with coaches because he's been coached and is a coach. If I'm an owner, you should ask for permission and let let. Can I speak to Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Can I speak to somebody that is more linked? Can I talk to your head coach? Because if your head coach... You've, I've heard nothing from Patrick saying he's not a coordinator. Now, the reason I believe in Eric Benneby, and I said this three years ago, and I said it publicly, and, I was, and, I was, and now it's come true. Okay. I say Eric ain't going to never get a job because every time the cameras show, it show him in passing and show Andy. Call, and I, this, I said, this going to hurt him because people are seers, even owners. But GMs should know better. That's who's doing most of your hiring and talking to your owner. GMs should know better. They're standing up on a table for a coach. Yeah. And so for you to not give this man an opportunity, that goes against the grain because 31 other teams has this same opportunity. GMs should know better. Now, what you may want to question is uh, – do he need a, a existing quarterback? Uh, c- can we trust him with a new quarterback? But once again, this is the guy that used to sit 
with Patrick Mahomes when he wasn't starting. Remember, he was not starting. So this was the guy who was talking to him. Yeah. You know, and saying, hey, your day is coming. And help in developing him. This how do uh, how do coach Gannon and the other coach how, how did they start by somebody teaching them by them seeing uh, seeing other coaches do their thing? This is the funny thing now. The Philadelphia Eagles head coach called the plays, the same as Andy Reid. Yep. What is the difference, my friend? He gets a credit. So I, I, I tell you, like, it's right here. I wouldn't have left. I wouldn't have left Kansas City yeah. to prove a point. But he has but to. But he has to. But he has to. See, yeah. I would have stayed. And, see, that, because, and, and that's what pisses me off, Nick. Yeah. That's what pisses me off. Somebody who's so, <laughs> so dedicated to his craft. Yeah. So good at his craft. Has to, has over, had to overcome so much. Yeah. Running back, coming into an offensive coordinator, that's rare. So that means he had to overcome a real obstacle just to get into that position. And you have to leave home. Right. Because nobody would give you an opportunity. That's right. To build your own. That's right. So now, now he's in a situation. Yes. That's terrible. It's a terrible situation. It's, no it's, quarterback. <laughs> Don't know where whether you're going to draft one or go free agent. Terrible they have ownership. Done, they have done a bad job there at quarterback. That's probably the worst ran organization in the league. Right. Under scrutiny. Yes. The owner, you don't even know if the owner is going to be the owner. That's right. It's probably the only team so in the, the league. Up guy, itself. The new guy, gal, that comes in may scrap the whole coaching Ain't staff. Ain't that something else? He left safety for uncharted but waters. He, but he had to. Yeah. And that's what sucks about it. That he had to. Because he would have stayed under that shelter and it would have been sucky for him. Right. Let me let me say this right here. When I when I because like I said, I said it two or three years ago. And then what what got me was I went to Deion Sanders' house out in Canton. Okay. And he was having a coaching meeting. And he had coaches coming in to show his coaches how he wanted things to be ran. You know, because Dion has always had big picture. You know, he's like, hey, fellas, I know we're at Jackson State, but we ain't going to coach. We're not going to operate like that, yeah. We're going to operate, we operate on this level. Correct. So he brought in a few coaches, nice. one from Bama. And then he had, he got this big old TV room, and he had uh, uh, Coach Eric B. Enemy. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, he brought him in, and Eric was just breaking down things for guys and talking to guys. And that let me know right there. I said, wow. And I said it again in my mind. I said, this dude will never get a head coach's job, but he know his job. That's the sad <laughs> thing. That's what bothers me. And then when my man, LaShawn, I'm not going to want to pronounce his name wrong. Yeah. When you say that right there, you, and you haven't done your homework. Because for me to sit there and that's see per, him talk for 30 minutes, yeah, for see him to talk to prime people for 30, 45 minutes and how they do things and how they break down things and how they get to things. And I'm saying in my mind, because in my mind, when I first saw him years ago with Coach, I'm like, man, Eric ain't doing no work. But then I saw him mm -hmm. distributing for yourself, yeah. this, this education. Yeah. Wow. In the history of the NFL, how long has the NFL been around, Nate? 100 years? Oh, a long time, yeah, man. I think it's been 100 years. How many black head coaches have there been? I don't know. Nah, I wouldn't know that. Okay. About 20? 24. Yeah. <coughs> About 20. The, 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 thing, the thing is it's going to always be a hard road, but the guys that get in there and, and, and meet this challenge and uh, go straight ahead with it and – and fight through the adversity of it. My hat's off to him. Because uh, I, I don't know. See, like what you just shared with me about your experience at Washington. See, you almost make me don't want to cheer for your team no more. And you down with you, though. Uh, every time I turn around, the people you that rock, The people you, that are though. running it now. <clears throat> yeah. People are running it now. They got it right, you know. Um, yeah. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Uh, wow. And even, you know, you find that even the coaches that do fall into the opportunities – as of late, get cut short. Yeah. Brian Flores is one that pops up. Um, you look at who? Uh, the coach that was in Texas, Lovey Smith. 
you know, and, and I, and I, I want to believe these owners, not, not the Flores deal, but I, I want to believe that the owner for Lovey said, Hey man, come give me this year. I, I, I just want to believe that he, he told him that, you know, cause Lovey was in and out of the, what about Steve Wilkes? <clears throat> didn't even get to know him. Steve, Steve Wilkes came in there. Yeah. Didn't even get to know him. And, and they started getting W's. Team yeah. started turning around. But as soon as the job's up for... Nah. Appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. All right, Nate. Let me get out of here. Yeah, man. Let me tell you something, yeah. people. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I, I always do race issues reluctantly. Mm. You know, because uh, I, I know where my heart at. Yeah. I know what I believe. I believe in fair play. Yep. I've always worked with guys, though, Michael Irving, you, mm -hmm. who's very vocal about it. You know, and that's, I guess that's my balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to shy away from who I am or what I look like okay. ever. I'm comfortable. I like where I'm at in life. Yeah. And, uh, and, that's, and this is who you're going to get. Yeah. All the time, a guy that's going to be very respectful. Yep. But don't step on me. That's all I ask. You know, that's all I ask. And, and all the people that's around me, yeah. white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever uh, race name yeah. that you like to use, that's me. Yeah. Straightforward, respectful, and I respect. The, I expect the same. Y'all heard it there. Y'all just heard Nate Dog dropping the yeah. gems on you. Okay, yeah. hey, that's another episode, y'all. Let me tell you some. Y'all check in next week. We're gonna bring y'all some new fire. What you got? Agro. We done flushed another one. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. See y'all next week. <laughs>